All right, so I just woke up this morning to the new update in my 2024 Tesla Model 3, the version 12 that now has Grok integrated into the UI of the vehicle. I was pretty excited for this. It's been available in the US for a couple of months now, but here in Canada, it is just rolled out. So in today's video, we're gonna be looking at how that integrates with your experience driving your Tesla. And by the way, the reason why I make that distinction is because at least for now, Grok is still in beta mode and cannot actually control the commands that the voice commands themselves would do to the vehicle. So it's really more for just utilizing for conversational uh, style practices and then also asking it different questions rather than actually controlling the vehicle itself like the voice commands do. A couple more details about that as well for the Grok update, not available for every Tesla vehicle. Over time, this might get rolled out, but for now, it's only available in the Model 3, S, Y, and X uh, that are equipped with an AMD chip, essentially. So you can check that for yourself in the vehicle settings and then additional settings. Uh, as you can see on screen here, if you have the AMD, your car will uh, essentially be able to run this new update in the near future, if not already. All right, so right now I'm in 0.5, so you can see both the screen as well as the steering wheel here. The way that you access Grok is the same as the voice command. So with voice commands, instead of just pressing one time, which is therefore a voice command, you would hold and long press this, boom, for Grok to come up right here. So right here it says, hey Griffin, how can I help you? Now, before I actually ask it a couple of prompts, let's go ahead and put this back into one here so you have a better view. I want to mention the fact right here that you can do three different things. You can sign in, like I said earlier. So if we click on sign in, this will actually bring you to the mobile app. So my phone is actually filming, but I'll try to add something here. Essentially on the mobile app, it'll go and open up Grok on XAI. Like I said, really straightforward. You can just sign into your account so that everything you talk about here is then also synced with your Grok account on other devices, or you can scan a QR code. So let's get out of that and go back into Grok mode. And then here are the two other things that we can add, right? So first of all, we can mute it so that the car isn't listening to you in Grok mode, or we can click back on here in order to have this nice little display showing that it is listening in real time. Now, clicking on Ara, Ara is actually the AI's voice. So in this case, we have upbeat female, and there's a couple of different ones that you can choose. I went through a couple of them and my favorite was Ara. Right now, I will go through all of them so you can have an example of which one is best suited for you. Just say rock mode anytime and I flip into that gravelly growl you love. Imagine a smooth, confident, baritone-like mix of Sam Elliott and a young Anthony Hopkins. Imagine my words drifting like soft mist over ancient hills. Like warm whiskey poured over gravel low. This is Gork. Now piss off. All right, so that just gave you an example of all the different ones. Obviously, Gork is like a joke. And then we also have this right here, Assistant. So you can choose what type of AI essentially it's going to uh, it, it, it's going to take, right? So either an assistant style voice, if you want it to be your personal assistant in the car, or you can have it be a language tutor, a therapist style, not entirely sure you'd want Grok to be a therapist, but it is there if you want. Storyteller, kids story time, kids trivia game, meditation, Grok, Doc, and then Conspiracy. So let's go through a couple examples to see what that looks like. Let's click on Conspiracy here. Hi Sal, I'm hoping that you can help me uh, identify what the best time would be to schedule an appointment at the gym. Hey, sure thing. What gym are you talking about? I can check for peak hours or quieter times based on their schedule. Hi Sal, I'm hoping you can help me schedule an appointment at a gym. Oh man, gyms? That's where they brainwash you into becoming a government drone, all sweating out your free will. But hey, if you're gonna do it, skip the big chains. They're tracking your reps for the deep state. Want me to look up a spot near you that's not too sketchy? For example, I'm assuming the meditation version would be for something like this. Hey Sal, I had a really stressful day. I'm sitting in the car now uh, after work in the parking lot and I'd like you to help me do a five minute breathing exercise to help lower my stress. Can you help me with that? Yeah, let's do it. Close your eyes, feel your seat pressing against you. Breathe in through your nose. Two, three, 
four. All right, so yeah, overall, I think we get the point. I did write out a couple different prompts though to see how well it responds. Now, since it's using the same Grok uh, LLM, I'm sure it's gonna be responding pretty well, but let's just take a look because in my opinion, the best use case is gonna be, you know, I'm driving down the road and I have something that comes to mind and I wanna either take some notes, so have it sync directly with my actual Grok account so I can look at it later and or just have questions like, you know, I'm driving down the road, I'm driving into uh, Minneapolis, hey Grok, how, uh, what's the population of Minneapolis or what are some great restaurants that I should check out, right? Stuff like that. So let's now go take a look at some of these different prompts that I wrote down. Hey Sal, can you actually give me some current information about what traffic is like in downtown Ottawa right now? And should I take the direct route or a different route in order to avoid traffic? Downtown Ottawa is pretty jammed this morning. Construction on Highway 417 near Leon Streets blocking some lanes. Plus, ongoing work at Parkdale and Baseline intersections from city updates. Expect delays on the main 417 corridor, especially eastbound toward the core. Skip the direct route if you're heading that way. Try Waze for real-time reroutes. Looks like going south on Highway 416 first, then looping in via Richmond Road avoids most backups. Safer bet, honestly. Hey Sal, what's your take on Tesla stock coming into earnings season next week? Should I take a position or should I hold off? What's your take on that? Tesla stock's been volatile lately, up 5% yesterday alone after that record delivery beat, but still hovering around 435. Analysts are eyeing Q3 earnings on October 22nd, expecting 52 cents per share and 26 billion in revenue, though deliveries crushed estimates at 497,000 cars, so maybe a surprise upside there. My take? If you're long-term bullish on EVs and autonomy-like, robo-taxis could flip everything. Snagging now might pay off big, but short term, it's bumpy. Musk's political noise and margin squeezes have folks jittery on X. I'd hold off till post earnings, unless you've got nerves of steel. What's your timeline? All right, let's try out the Grok Doc version. So let me just make up some symptoms and see what it comes up with. Hey Sal, I'm kind of feeling under the weather today. I have a sore throat, uh, my head is hurting as well, and uh, my eyes are a bit uh, are a bit red. What what could be uh, some of the underlying conditions from these symptoms? Well, without knowing your specific symptoms, it's tough to pinpoint exact conditions. But let's think through some common ones. Things like fatigue, headaches, or dizziness could point to dehydration, stress, or even low blood sugar. If you're feeling chest pain or shortness of breath, it might be heart related, could be serious, so don't ignore it. Allergies or infections could explain sneezing, rashes, or fever. Want to share what you're dealing with so I can narrow it down? No, not really. I was just trying to get a sense of uh, what Grok Doc has to offer. Let's now jump into kids' story time. Hey, Sal. I asked you, can you make me a 30 second short story for my kids in the back seat about a miniature wiener dog going to school for the first time? Oh, mini wiener dog school. That's adorable. Picture this, there's Wiggles, tiniest dox hunt ever, with ears like floppy noodles and spots like sprinkles. He trots out of his doghouse, tap, 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 backpack, bigger than his whole butt, crayons clacking. First day jitters, yup, tails wagging backwards. At the gate, big dogs bark loud. Woof. All right, so obviously this video is just scratching the surface of Grok's utilization in the Tesla, and I'm sure over time it will continue to improve. But as of right now, it's really just sort of a conversational style uh, assistant that can answer your questions while you're on the road. I think it's definitely an interesting take in the car and something I'm going to be using quite a bit. I'm constantly having, you know, questionings in my head about certain things while I'm on the road or things that I'm thinking about that I want answers to. So I think that's definitely a good addition over time to be interesting if it can actually um, connect more with the vehicle itself as well so we can control certain things about uh, the vehicle's utilization but yeah for now uh, definitely a good addition let me know down in the comments what you think about the integration of grok in the tesla if it's something that you're going to be using or you think it's somewhat of a gimmick